The beautiful city of Paris is centrally located in the historical Arkansas River Valley. From being a major coal mining region to having one of the first facilities in the U.S. to offer hospitalization insurance, the area is a place of historical significance as well as an area of natural beauty located at the northwest base of Mount Magazine in Logan County, Arkansas. The landmark Smith Hospital in Paris was instrumental in making the River Valley and the surrounding communities of Scranton, Subiaco, Midway, Coxville, Ratcliffe, Driggs, Roseville, and Gray Rock what they are today. People from all the surrounding area and the surrounding towns could come in to Paris when they was available. They had to take a ferry across at Ozark if you wanted to come across there, or at Roseville over to Altus. Uh, those from uh, 15, 20 miles out, it was, it was a difficult trip. Well, way back, they, people couldn't even come to the, to the hospital. The doctors went out in buggy, horse buggies, and went to their homes. And if they had to have surgery or something, they did it at home a lot because people could not afford that. And then after they added this on and started doing like we did, they hired, you know, mostly young girls out of school. Well then, you know, it was getting more like every, a lot of people. And it was all of Logan County, not just Paris. It was all over. Mm -hmm. And they got paid, and all the times not with money, but people would give them chickens and eggs. And these ledgers, some of them go back in the 1800s, and they actually describe taking cattle or chickens for fees. One fee entry made not by the bookkeeper, but by one of the doctors. My dad loved to show it off. It said, uh, paid in full three damn lies. They were our doctors. They took care of us. They cared for us. They knew our family. They knew my grandfather. They knew my father, myself. Well, Dr. John was my first doctor that I guess I ever saw. We were born at home, and he was the one that came out to the area, which is several miles from here to deliver me. And so he was actually my first doctor that ever cared for me. But then I have used Dr. Charles and Dr. James for different things. It, it, they were a part of the community, not just uh, an entity like we see sometimes at the big hospitals. And they are probably the first HMO place in Arkansas. There was a lot of coal miners here up until the uh, late 40s and maybe even early 50s. And the Smiths established an insurance uh, program whereby you paid $2 a month and you had access to medical care and you it was hospital insurance too. If you had to go to the hospital, well, it didn't cost you any extra. In the 40s and early 50s, and maybe to the late 30s, it was this area. You know, that was the, I, I couldn't even name the number of coal mines that was around here or close by. And my dad worked in the coal mine and got his leg broken in the coal mine. And uh, uh, I can remember telling him one time that uh, I didn't think I could work in the coal mine. Sorry, but he t he said, "Yeah, you could if you and your family got hungry." And that's 
that's about how it was. They sounded a whistle around here close for the mines when there was an accident. And uh, the doctors dropped whatever they were doing, one of them would, and they would go. Of course, when they come, there was only Dr. Jim and Dr. Mack, the two older ones, doctors. And uh, they would go, and they would go down in the mines with them to treat them down there even. And if they need to come to the hospital, and sometimes they'd get broken backs and legs. And then when you had a broken leg or back or anything, it was, you was in the hospital a long time. So now we're going to finish touring the upper floors. This is the main OR. It's basically the only OR. It had a skylight, a picture window. There was a about a 10 bulb light that you could tilt and move around. This little fan amounted to what there was in the way of air conditioning. The Autoclave was in here. It's a pretty neat looking uh, deal. If you dropped an instrument, you could pick it up, throw it in boiling water, let it boil for a while, and then take it out and give it back to the operating team. Doc John was my doctor, and uh, he was our, my parents' doctor. So that's who I got to know first. He was a little rough, too. <laughs> we went to Fort Smith, <clears throat> got the milk delivered. Well, we was going to stop at the uh, railroad crossing because there was a propane tank in front of us, and he stopped a little bit ahead of us, and we hit him. When he did, I just went like that to the dash on the vehicle and broke my wrist. I didn't know it was broke at the time, but it was hurting pretty bad. It must have been about an hour and a half or so before I ever got to see Doc John. I well, went in to see Doc John and he was talking to him. We filled him. Next thing I know, I'm behind him and he yanks, puts that thing in place and cold sweat just breaks out on my face. Hurt like heck. And anyway, that was my first real encounter with Doc John. One time I had a big Holstein bull get me down and rolled me around on the ground pretty good. And, and the next morning I couldn't, well, that, after that I couldn't hardly move around. But I decided you better go up and see him. And he said, what's wrong, young man? And I said, I think I've got some busted ribs. And uh, he said, well, how'd you get out of bed this morning? And I said, I rolled over on my all fours and crawled up. And he said, uh, yep. You've got some buster ribs, he said, that, that'll be $25. And that was it. And I said, you don't do anything. He said, no, we used to wrap them. We found out that did more harm than good. They also had x-ray uh, machinery and so forth that uh, prior to World War II. And um, uh, some, of, some of those things, they were on the cutting edge of medicine. You know, they had the best of training, and yet they brought that training to our little small rural community and they stayed up on it very well. Uh, stayed up on the, mo the most modern things that went on and, and innovative as well. And they practiced eight or nine years. And then I guess they were reading and they could see that medicine was really becoming scientific and that they didn't really know all this stuff. So great uncle went first. He packed up and went to Philadelphia Medical School and I've had a PhD medical historian tell me that in that time frame, that was the best medical school in the U.S. And then my grandfather went to Tulane, which was the best medical school in the South, according to the same lady, and probably did two years. And then they practiced some more. Then they moved to Paris and you know did the sabbaticals and things. But you could, you could take a broken leg or a broken hip and tie the foot up in that little frame and turn the cranks, get it where you thought it was straight, and then take an x-ray, and if it was, you could wrap your plaster on, or if you needed to operate, you could operate. Some of the equipment that went on there is over here, they had various anesthetic gases. 
as they needed them. And then turning left, we head down to OB and X-ray. If you weren't born at home, you were born at the Smith Hospital. Second floor was all for the nursery and babies and the mothers. That was what was done up there. And uh, I was born here in 1946, and my wife was born here in 1947. I had five children, and they were all born here. I had my babies here, both of them, I have two. We always joked around my place, the, the street that the hospital's on is Martha Street. Uh, I always told my mother, her name is Martha, and I said, the reason they have that street named Martha is because you kept having kids, one right after another here. All five of us were born at the Paris Hospital. This is OB. OB was pretty simple back then steel bassinets. They, my ancestors delivered from the side. I never could understand that. The nurse would tend the patient until she was close. The doctors would be downstairs and then the nurse would take this bell, give it a ring and that would call the doctor up. He'd roll up his sleeves and deliver the baby. People from this area loved and respected the Smith doctors. They practiced progressive medicine in a simple, concise manner, caring for the people of this region for four generations. That hospital and those doctors really meant a lot to this community and that uh, they were way ahead of themselves and something should be done to preserve that hospital if possible. It was devastating to, in many reasons. You know, you just had things that went on here that you would always want memories of. And that, that kind of left us. And I so many people that couldn't afford to go out of town. To me, it's memories. I, I would like to see it restored as much as possible. Uh, uh, to what it was. The next step in preserving the Smith legacy and their heritage in the River Valley will rely on the benevolence of those descendants of the many people who benefited by the caring hands and hearts of the Smith doctors. My grandfather and great uncle, great uncle was the oldest but lived the longest, both of their estates were left to either pay the bills for people who couldn't pay, it chokes me up, <clears throat> or build a new hospital. And if it wasn't used up in my father's lifetime, they would give it to the school system. Well, it did get used up because a lot of people quit paying. When my dad and my uncle went to war for four or five years, and Uncle John held this down by himself, when they came back, all the money he had collected, however much it was or wasn't, he paid all the bills, paid the nurses, and then split it three ways, put theirs back for their service. So anyway, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm just a guy that's left and you know, it, it's obviously up to me to do something because uh, I'm sort of the last of the, the group that's really interested. The generations of Smith doctors never bowed to the pressures of their commitment, giving the community the utmost care and attention. In these times, the words health care meant just that, caring for one's health not the cost.